It's cold. It's really cold. Wow. Hey guys, in this video, while passing through this lovely green grapeville, we travel to the second largest winery in the world, Krikova Wine Cellar. Nine miles north of Kishinev is located in the same named town. There we go. All right, welcome back to another video. Today is Tanishri's birthday. <laughs> so we came to the uh, Krikova Wine Cellar. We're gonna take a tour, the cellar tour. It's gonna be one and a half hour, maybe two hours. We're so excited. So excited. And it's 13 degrees down there. We were kind of late. You know, we made all those people wait for us. But thanks to them, we're get, getting in the in the place now. There's like a small small bus here. Our shoot guy is gonna take us to the to the cellar. Oh, this is not our tour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Today started with a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, that was in Russian. So there are like three languages, Russian, Romanian, and English. Well, the ticket without tasting, it's uh, 185 lu, which is about $10, maybe $12. So now we're heading to find our tour bus and we'll get in the, under the ground. Okay, our mini bus came. There are only three of us. It's like going from hell to heaven in a few seconds. It's so cold. What we enjoyed the most was a lovely electric mini train takes visitors on a 6 km tour of the main tunnels in the underground. The streets of an underground metropolis are actually referred to as cellar tunnels and each has a name based on a wine variety such as Chardonnay or Cabernet. The astounding 120 km total length of Krakova cellars of which 80 km are currently in use is mind-blowing. The tunnels, which are up to 100 meters deep, were first excavated in the 15th century, when Kishinya was constructed from limestone. The vaults are even expanding as a result of ongoing limestone carving. It's so cold, guys. Visit wine cellars. We'll wear something warm. All right. Now it's our tour. So, uh, guys, I have one strong request for everybody who is in my train number 4 and in the train number 11. So, we'll come to the section of rain wash and the and I have a strong request for everybody. Please don't touch those bottles that you'll see ahead. We are enriching the wine itself with uh, CO2 gas, bubbles of CO2 gas. In each bottle here, we have seven atmospheres of pressure during the time that the bottles are sitting in this meter. So, please don't touch them. Just feel it. Cool, nice. Uh, so we are here in the most darkest place, in the most uh, down place in our underground city. We are on minus 100 meters deep. After a very friendly introduction by our sweet guide Mr. Michael and descending until we reached the Champagne station, which was 100 meters below, we were presented Krikova's Vin Spumant, which is made using the same technique as Champagne made in France. And here, we were not allowed to film. Look directly ahead. So here in total, after this open doors, we have one million bottles of wonderful sparkling wines. And in total, the area here is 48 kilometers of uh, space. Uh, full of such a pupitres with bus. So, uh, as you see in your back and in my back, we have such pupitres. In these pupitres, the bottles of sparkling wine are staying during eight weeks, so during two months. We are introducing the bottles in a horizontal position in each pupiter. And once in two days during eight weeks, we are changing the angle of each bottle and we are riddling it on 45 degrees angle by hands of a wonderful women that have the name of Remuel. Following a detailed introduction of how these special types of wine are made in the machine, the Krikova Underground Cinema was the next stop. We saw a great movie on Krikova while sipping a glass of Krikova sparkling wine. 
So we watched the history of Kurkula and their products, and it was kind of good. I mean, yeah, now we're gonna go out to the next day. There's also a wine shop, uh, and of course we've been to cinema. It's a really, really huge place. Yeah, it's a museum. A modest museum and a wine glass shaped cellar area named Casas, which is about 600 storage places, are both present. So we're at 150 meters now. We're gonna go to see the oldest wine uh, bottles in the world, uh, which produce in Moldova. And uh, actually, we saw it in the cinema, but uh, we're really excited to go there and see it, uh, you know, with our own eyes. The guy kept saying that you cannot touch it, you cannot touch it, so <laughs> we're just gonna see them. Maybe we'll touch them, but we'll see. No. No. Don't be a bad <laughs> Sorry. Well, this is the... It's called President's Tree, so... These are the presidents that they have their own stock in this wine cellar. Cool, right? Wow, it's been so much fun actually in this wine cellar. I'm so glad that we came here. This is the, this this is where the stock is, like the dif from different popular people, especially the presidents of the world. Wine produced in 1954 uh, in Moldova, in Krikova, and it is 50 percent of Cabernet and 50 percent of Pinot Noir. It goes wonderful with meat dishes. So when Mr. Ramfi needs a bottle or maybe ten bottles, he calls the, the embassy of Belgium in Moldova. Somebody from this embassy is coming to us. We are shipping him by the through the embassy directly to him. 50 bottles, 100 bottles, or 500 bottles. All so together. We these are the names of the organizations or people that owns the stock. What is interesting that Mr. Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, has here 1,000 bottles of Cabernet. And there is a Russian pre uh, president, Putin like is also. But, stock. Uh, it's a, uh, Here you can see the United States. John Kerry. Uh, stock. Let's make a semi-story. We have uh, Jewish oyster wine. Jewish oyster wine was produced in 1902 in Jerusalem by a person who unfortunately was on Titanic in 2012 and he fell down in the ocean and died. <laughs> so nobody can repeat. Nobody, nobody can repeat this wine. And this wine was produced in a lot of 300 bottles. The bottle of Jewish oyster wine is the last from that lot, made in 1902. The price of this bottle on the Sosby citation starts from 600,000 euros. 600,000 euros. Oh, here's my presence. Leverjan, right here. I cannot tell you how many stocks are here. It's like a huge wine cellar and with millions of wine bottles. And some of them are really old. And the guy is talking about a bottle of wine that was made by a Jewish in Jerusalem by a guy that who actually um, uh, drawn in the Titanic and uh, it was one of the special wines in the world but they cannot get uh, they couldn't get the receipt and he died so um, but now it's not you cannot taste it because it's really old it's poisonous it's just like a you know um, valuable part of a museum that they're keeping it over here <coughs> Uh, Mr. Michael, finally we met hello, you personally. Hello. <laughs> As our last trip, we explored the magnificent tasting rooms in the cellars, 50 meters below ground after the tour. There are several exquisitely designed venues available for meetings, celebrations and wine tastings. Visitors who have scheduled a tour that includes wine tasting are directed to these tables, and others can stop by a tiny wine shop before departing from the breathtaking cellars. You can also buy wine here, like different bottles you can buy. It has like a restaurant over here. It's a really cool place. Really cool place.
wide variety of wine but also pizza around here and you can buy you can taste it's a really wonderful place visit this place Krikol wine cellar is so good so we are in the last part of our trip uh, it's a souvenir shop we're gonna check out some things and uh, it's the end of the video thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to our channel and like like and, and share. share our videos bye bye